Welcome to Celebration Church Pretoria Online. We are excited to have the opportunity to connect with you through this online platform. Celebration Church Pretoria is part of the family of churches for Celebration Churches International, founded by Senior Pastors Tom and Bonnie Duchelle. The lead pastors for our Pretoria branch are Pastors Dixon and Itai Katsitsira. There are various ways that you can stay connected with the church. Connect with us on our various online platforms. Join the church WhatsApp group, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and join us on Zoom for different activities. Let us connect in our corporate prayer and fasting every Wednesday, which culminates in our domain prayer meetings from 6 to 7 p.m. on Zoom. If you are a student at the University of Pretoria, get connected with Ignite, our vibrant campus ministry which aims to bring light to the people all around us. Follow the various Ignite social media platforms and hashtag join the movement. We are excited to announce that we have moved into our very own building at 459 30th Avenue in Valeria. Thank you for standing in faith with us. We are expectant for what God will do through our ministry in this new season. We encourage you to continue giving to our building project fund as we embark on the renovations of the building. We also encourage you to continue giving your tithes and offerings through electronic funds transfers. For more information and details regarding what has been mentioned, please do not hesitate to send us a message in our inbox. As we continue with our service, please comment and let us know where you're watching from. Good day, church. Let's get ready to praise the Lord. Amen.
worship the Lord wherever you are just begin to open your mouth and bless the Lord Lord we thank you for who you are we praise your name this morning we worship you Lord from the depths of our hearts Lord may you receive this sacrifice of worship that we are giving into you let praises rise from the inside, from the inside of me. May you delight in the inside, in the inside of me. Come fill my from the inside of me set me on fire from the inside from the inside of me cause all I want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted high all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted high let praises rise from the inside from the inside Oh, 
open your mouth and begin to glorify the name of the Lord. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we magnify your name and we declare that there is none like you, O oh God. There is nobody like our God. Lord, may you be glorified, O oh Lord, in our lives. Because all I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. We would now like to invite you to join us for the word of the day. Welcome to Celebration Church Pretoria Online. We are already in the month of June, so we are quite excited about God's faithfulness in our lives. So let's just start by a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you that you are a faithful God. We are already in the month of June. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Even we thank you for the word. That is the word goes forth today. Lord, open our ears, soften our hearts, that this word may bring a change in our lives. So Father, we commit the word to you. As we decrease, may you increase this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we are excited that already we are in the month of, of June. The month of June, we are already half time. It's almost the half time, whereby I don't know how the year has been so far. You know, the past five months have been characterized by frustration and ex ex exasperation. You know, a lot of things, I don't know what has been going on in your lives. I don't know how the, the 2021 has been treating you. There's been depression, despair. There's been exhaustion and weariness. A lot of people are tired. A lot of people have even backslidden. That <laughs> even when church is opened, uh, for the physical meeting. Some people, they have actually backslidden. There's also um, deprivation and scarcity. There's stagnation of visions and plans. There's also confusion and um, perplexity. You know, one of the things that we are trusting God, even as we are entering, as we are getting ourselves to get into the second half of 2021, the first thing that we're trusting God for, we're trusting God for His drastic intervention in our lives you know we serve a god of drastic intervention you know the bible says in the book of uh, psalms 126 from verse 1 it says it was like a dream come true when you freed us from our bondage and brought us from zion we loved and loved and we were overflowed and we overflowed with gladness we were left shouting for joy and singing praise all nations saw it and joined it and saying, the Lord has done great miracles for them. You know, may this be your story. I don't know what the first half of the year has been for you. May God intervene on you. I'm calling that may the God of heaven have some drastic intervention on your behalf. I don't know what is your situation. You know, when a man is down to nothing, I know that God is up to something. May this be your portion, child of the living God. The second thing we're trusting God, even in this second half, is for total restoration. We serve a God of total restoration. I'm reminded of Joel, Joel chapter 2, verse 25. It says, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten, the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, the chewing locusts, my army which I sent to you. Then it goes on to say, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. Then you will know that I'm in your midst. I'm the Lord your God. There's no other God. My people shall never be put to shame. May, I don't know what COVID or the situation or our economy has eaten from you. May the God who restores, restore whatever the enemy has, has stolen from you. Remember in, in the book of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30, when David uh, went to Ziklag and everything was, was stolen from him, and he went to inquire from the Lord, if you go to verse 8. So David inquired from the Lord saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And the Lord 
answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and you shall without fail recover all. May you recover all that the enemy has stolen from you. May you recover the traction that you've, you failed to have in the first half of the year. May you recover. You know, if you go to verse 18 of, of the same chapter, the Bible says, So David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. David rescued his, his two wives and nothing of theirs was lacking. May it be your portion, child of the living God, that nothing should be lacking in, in, in your life. The third thing that I'm trusting God in this second half is supernatural empowerment. We serve a God of supernatural strength. You know, the Bible says in the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28, don't you know, haven't you heard that the Lord is the everlasting God who created the world? He never grows tired or weary. No one understands his thoughts. He strengthens those who are weak and tired. Even those who are young grow weak. And people can also grow exhausted. But those who trust in the Lord, for him to help them, will find their strength renewed. They will rise with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not grow weak. I'm trusting God that, you know, in this month that we are starting, in this month that we have embarked on, God is calling us that we need to operate in the supernatural. We need to operate in the supernatural. So today I'm going to talk about one of the enablers. So for the next few weeks, we are going to talk about various enablers that enable us to operate in the supernatural. So today I'm going to talk about a, a powerful enabler that if you are able to, 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 to harness it, if you are able to, to catch what I'm talking about today, you begin to operate in the supernatural. Today I'm going to talk about one enabler which I call the presence of God. The presence of God. So when you're talking of the presence of God, I've heard a lot of people that I say the presence of God. What is the presence of God? For you to understand this, there are four dimensions of God's presence. So the first dimension is we've got first the universal presence. You know when you know that there's an all around presence of God, that is an omnipresence God. You know this is the one that is uh, we talk about when you talk in um, when you read Psalms 139 verse 7. It says, where can I go to escape from you? Where can I get away from your presence? When I go to heaven, you will be there. If I go down um, in the world of the dead, which is in hell, you are there. If I flew away beyond the, 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 the east or lived to the furthest in the west, you will be there. You lead me there. And you are there to help me. If I ask the darkness to hide me or the light around me to turn in the night, even in the darkness, or not in the dark, the night is as bright as the day, and darkness and light, you are the same. So, you know, you can't, you know, this is the, the omnipresence of God. You know, this is the one when God uh, was talking in Isaiah 61, 66 verse 1. The Lord says, heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house could you build for me? What kind of place can I live in? You know, he said, "My, I myself created the universe. So God is everywhere. He is the omnipresence. He is everywhere. So there is the presence of God, which is the universal presence of God. Then there's a second dimension, which we call the abiding presence. You see, the abiding presence, this is the presence, when you say the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, this is the presence for each child of God. You know, when you go to Psalms uh, 23 verse 4, it says, even though... I go through the darkest darkness. I will not be afraid because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they protect me. When God says, I am with you, this is an abiding presence. You know, we find this in the book of Psalms, um, Psalms 3 verse 1. When it says, Lord, I have, I have so many enemies and so many who are against me. Listen how they slander against me, saying, look, he is hopeless. Even God can't save him from this. But in the depths of my heart, I truly know that Yahweh have, a, have, my, have become my shield. And you take me and surround me with yourself. And your glory covers me continually. You know, this is like an abiding presence. That God surrounds you continually. You know, this is um, 
when Jesus was talking about uh, to his disciples, uh, you know, on the Great Commission, you know, when he says, uh, you know, in verse 19 of uh, Matthew chapter 28, he says, wherever you go to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit, and teach them faithfully to follow what I've commanded them, never forget that I am with you every day, even to the completion of the age. This is an abiding presence that wherever you go, wherever you go, you know that the Lord is with me. The Lord is with me. The Lord surrounds you with his, with, with his presence. Then the third dimension of the presence of God is the active presence. This is when God is doing something. You remember when um, in the book of Exodus, chapter 13, verse 21, when the Lord went before them by the pillar of day, um, um, sorry, in the day by a pillar of cloud and led them through the way and in the night with a pillar of fire. That was an active presence where God needed to actually lead them physically, you know, for them to, to, to see what was, um, what was happening there. Uh, you can also see in the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 5, verse 18, you remember when they were worshipping and people, they, you know, the instruments and the worshippers were worshipping. And actually, if you go to, to verse 18b, it says, for, they said, for the Lord is good, that the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud. Verse 14 said, the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. You know, in our generation, we are waiting for this, for us to begin to see the presence of God, that we stop and we can't preach because we are so saturated by the presence of God. Remember, the last example that I will give, you know, for, for, the, for the active presence. You know, remember when um, in, in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 5, remember when the Philistines had taken the ark of the Lord and they went it and put it in, um, um, you know, in, 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 in the house of Dagon. And in the house of Dagon, the Bible actually says, uh, you know, if you go to 1 Samuel chapter 5 from, from verse 4, and when they rose early in the morning, there was Dagon fallen on his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. The head of Dagon, both his palms and his hands were broken and Dagon's only his torso was left on it. This is an active presence where God comes and does things to just show you, you know, that he is there with you. The last dimension is what I call the execution, execution presence, sorry. This one we also call it the accomplishing presence. This is a presence on demand. That when we want something from God, we actually call upon the Lord to, to actually come and, um, and, um, and work on our behalf. You know, for this one, if you go to the, to the life of Elijah, you know, in the book of First Kings, chapter 17, verse 1. You know, Elijah, you know, you see that Elijah, you know, when you go to verse 1, it says, Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Arab, as the Lord of Israel lives, before whom I stand. Actually, he was actually saying, before the, the Lord whom I stand, you know, actually what he did that time, he actually commanded a drought to say, at my word, there will not be rain for the next three years. And actually, there was no rain. And actually, what happened after that, if you go to, to 2 Kings, chapter, chapter number 18, when they had a showdown, with the prophets of Baal, actually, when you go to that to that uh, to that scripture, he actually said, "My God, who answers by fire," and that is actually the accomplishing presence. God answered that by fire. So, how does the presence of God impact our lives? You know, I, I've been talking that this is our season where we need to begin to operate in the supernatural. So, the presence of God, how does it help us? How does it? In catalyze or enable us to begin to embrace and operate in the supernatural. So what I'll do is I'll look at a few case studies from the Word of God where we saw the presence of God and what began to happen. You know, the first case study we use is because it's the case study of the disciples of Jesus. So what happened to the disciples of Jesus? Um, if you go to John chapter 6 verse 16, the Bible says, and when evening came, Jesus' disciples went down to the lake got to the boat and went across uh, towards Capernaum. Night came and Jesus had not come to them. 
Then verse 18, then a strong wind was blowing and stirring up the water. Then the disciples rode about five or six kilometers when Jesus um, saw them walking on the water. When they saw Jesus walking on the water, coming to them, and they were terrified. And verse 20 says, Jesus said, don't be afraid. Jesus told them that it is I. Listen to what verse 21 says. And they willingly took him into the boat. And immediately the boat reached the land where it was heading for. Immediately. Oh, I love the word of God. You know, this other, if you read this in the Amplified, uh, verse 21, it says, when Jesus came into the boat, immediately they reached the shore, which they have been slowly making their way. <laughs> I love the word of God. If you read this in the message, it's, it says they reached the exact spot that they were heading to. So when you allow the master or the presence of God to be in your life, number one, you overcome storms in your life. Number two, what has been slowing you to get to your place, you the, act, the supernatural is activated. You reach your place immediately. There is acceleration. There is speed that is activated in the presence of the master. Supernatural speed. Some of you, you have been off course the first half of the year. Some of you, there are things that have been causing stagnation in your life. As you allow the presence of the Lord to operate, to, for you to be in the presence of the Lord, speed is activated. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. May this be your portion as you allow the master to come into your situation that you have speed, that you begin to get to the place where you are supposed to get to. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The second case study is the story of Moses. You know, Moses, what happened to Moses? The Lord called him. And Moses, if you go to Exodus chapter 4, verse 10, then Moses said to the Lord, Oh, Lord, I'm not an eloquent, neither have I spoken to your servant. But I'm a man of slow of speech, slow of tongue. Then the Lord said to him, Who made the mouth? Or who has made you? Who makes mute? Who makes the deaf? And that's the seeing or the blind. Have I not the Lord done that? Then the Lord said, Now therefore, go, and I'll be with your mouth, and I'll teach you what you shall, you shall say. I don't know what limitations you have in your life. One of the things I, I've learned is, the Lord does not need what you don't have. What you don't have, the presence of God will fill and will make you to be, to be sufficient in the things that you think you don't have. Moses said to go. And if you read the Bible, there was never a time where actually Aaron spoke. Moses spoke by himself. He actually spoke by himself. But sometimes the enemy begins to bring things that you don't have. It's only the presence of God that brings you to a place where you are able to, to, do, to do powerful things. You know, in, in the book of Exodus chapter 33, the Lord says, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. When you allow the presence of God to go with you wherever you go, you begin to connect to the rest of God. That's why the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 11, from verse 30, it says, are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burnt out on religion? And God says, come to me, get away with me, and you will recover your life. I will show you how to take real rest. Walk with me and work with me and watch how I will do it. Learn from the enforced rhythm of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and I will learn, you will learn to live freely and lightly. As you pursue the presence of God, God will give you rest in different areas that you have been struggling with. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The third case study that I will, I will, I will share is of David. You know, David was despised at every level. That, you know, he was a child of wedlock. That, you know, he was not the, 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 the legitimate child. That, you know, when even Samuel came to 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 anoint the, the sons of Jesse, that they forgot about him. So what happened is, Samuel came to, to, to Jesse's home. Let, let's catch up with them on, on 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 11. 
Then someone said to Jesse, are, are all the young men here? Then he said, Ah, oh, by the way, there remains the youngest one. He is keeping sheep. And Samuel says to Jesse, Send for him, for we will not sit down till you get here. Oh, I love the word of God. May I prophesy to someone that some people will not sit down until you come. They are waiting for you. Some people that had written you off because of the presence of God. Guess what? God is going to do something. You know, actually what happened there, uh, the Bible says when he came, now he was ready. So they brought him to him, him in. Now he was ready. His bright eyes, good looking. And the Lord said, arise and anoint him. For this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil, anointed uh, him in the midst of his brother. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. And this guy, no one knew who was David. But from that time, if you go to, to, to 1 Samuel chapter 16, um, down there when, when, um, when Saul was having nightmares, Actually, the, the, the presence of God, actually, because of the presence of God that was upon him. One of the servants, actually, this is what he says. Uh, so say to his servants, verse 17, provide me a man who can play well and bring him to me. And one of the servants answered and said, look, there's one of the sons of Jesse, um, uh, 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 um, you know, who is skillful in playing and is a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, a handsome person and the Lord is with him. The Lord is with him. Let me tell you, when the presence of God rests upon your life, even some of the people who have written you off, they will remember you. They will wait for you. I don't know what opportunities you have lost in the past um, half of the year. I don't know what opportunities you thought you are, you are not qualified for them. But as the presence of God rests upon you, the supernatural are activated in your life. The third person I will look at, the fourth person actually, is Jesus. Jesus, the presence of God was so evident in his life. It was identified by different people. For, for the sake of our sermon, there are three people that I will show you where they clearly saw that, you know what, the Lord was with him. The presence of God, he operated with, you know, the, that abiding presence. It was so evident in his life. And the first person is, is Nicodemus. If you go to the book of John chapter 3, verse 1, the Bible says there was a man if, uh, of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, and he came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher and you come from God. No one can do these signs that unless God was with him. Nicodemus saw it that, ah, this Signs and wonders you do, you can't do it if you're a normal person. May I, may I say this to you? Signs and wonders will only be experienced if the Lord is with you. If you allow his presence, the abiding presence, the accomplishing presence to operate in your life, the supernatural will happen. And also Peter, his disciple, you know, in the book of Acts chapter, chapter 10, verse 38, Actually, he says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, with power, and he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The presence of God. Jesus, because of the presence of God that was with him, Jesus was able to do all these things. And Jesus himself recognized this. You know what Jesus said in, in the book of John? Chapter 8, verse 28. Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and I do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me. I speak these things. Listen to verse 29. He who sent me is with me. He is with me. He knew that the Father was with him. You know, carriers of God's presence are commanders of His power. We must purpose to grow His divine presence. You know, the last promise when Jesus was on the Great Commission was, the, was not of power, but it was of his presence. He said, Lo, I will always be with you. Divine presence subdues. His divine presence subdues your enemies. His divine presence 
you know, it's superior to the anointing. The anointing is a thing. It's a virtue. But the divine presence is a growing relationship. The anointing is for function and it can be exhausted. But divine presence is for relationship. So don't, don't value the anointing, but value his presence. You know, there are consequences of the absence of the presence of God in our lives. You know, you look at a person like Samson. You know, Samson, Samson was banking on the anointing until when he lost the presence. You know, if you go to the book of Judges, chapter 14, you know, you see that, you know, this man at one time, when the Spirit of the Lord was upon him, when God was with him, he would tear a, a lion. At one time, I, you know, he took a, the gates of a, of, of, a, of a city and he went away. He did powerful things until when he was lured with Delilah. If you go to Judges chapter 16, you know, it says, you know, they shave the, 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 he, you know, the, his locks on his head. And when, if you go to verse 20 of chapter 16, and she said to the Philistines, um, you know, she, she said to him that the Philistines are here, Samson. So he woke up from his sleep and says, I'll go out as before at the other times to shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. The presence of God. There's some things that if the presence of God departs from you, you will not be able to do what, what, what you are called to do. Your loss of divine presence. You become a toy. The enemy will toy toy you. I mean, look at what happened with, um, with, um, with, with Samson. They actually took off his eyes. They began to, to do funny things for you. You need the presence of God. The greatest of the devil, um, that the devil will attack in your life, is not the anointing, but it's the relationship you have with God. When he attacks the relationship, when he knows that his presence is not with you, you are done as a child of God. You know, the, the, the other example, you know, you see is the story of Jonah. Remember Jonah? I mean, if you read Jonah chapter 1, he says Jonah, and, and, and the word of God came to Jonah, the son of um, Amittai, saying that, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry against it for the wickedness um, has come up before me. So what did Jonah do? <laughs> Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish. From what? From the presence of the Lord. How can Jonah, when we, when we go and see Uncle Jonah, we want to ask him what was going on in his head. And he actually, he went to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. And he paid for his fare. Let me tell you something. When you flee from the presence of God, you pay for your own fare. That's why sometimes there are some things you are paying for. There are some things... There are, there are some things that are costing you because you are going where you are not supposed to go. Anyway, that was for free. He went down to Tashish to flee from the presence of God. And when he, when, when the flood, so when, when, when he went away from the presence of God, you see, you hear that, you know, the, the, the Lord sent a great wind and there was mighty tempest in the sea. So the ship was about to be broken. And actually, most of the people, they began to throw out things out of there. In your life, when there are unconquerable storms in your life, could it be that you, are, you have left the presence of God? You have left where God wants you to go? You know, when you see in your life there's momentum losses, monumental losses, it could be that you know you are going where God does not want you to go. This is the time for us to reflect on some of the things that are happening in our lives. So as we touch down, what are some of the keys that help us to remain connected in the presence of God? What are the things that make God to be comfortable to be around you? You know, when you're in the presence of God, it means God is comfortable hanging around you. The first thing is upright living. There are people who pursue, these are people who pursue holiness and remain in right standing with God. You know, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, or his ear heavy that it cannot hear, but your iniquities have separated you from God. 
your sins have hidden his face from you. So as we actually pursue to live a life of uprightness, God helps us. That's why the Bible says in the book of Psalms 24, verse 3, it says, who, who may go up to the mountain, to the Lord's mountain? Who may stand in his presence, in his holy place? Then verse 4 says, the one who has clean hands, a pure heart, who does, who does not long what is false or lie under the earth. We need to be people with clean hearts, clean hands, pure hearts, as we pursue upright living. The second thing that helps us to create a platform for God to hang around us is living in obedience. You know, the Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, and consider the example of Jesus, the anointed one, he said before us, let his mindset become your motivation. He existed in the form of God, yet gave no thought of sizing equality, um, equality with God as his supreme prize. Instead, he emptied himself out of, um, of his outward glory by reducing himself to the form of a lowly servant. He became human. He humbled himself and became vulnerable, choosing to be revealed as a man and was obedient. He was the perfect example. Even his death, a criminal's death by crucifixion. This is the example we have. We need to live a life of obedience. There are so many things that God has said to you to do in 2021. As you obey, as you surrender, as you humble yourself, God will begin to help you. You know, the Bible says in the book of John chapter 14 verse 21, those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And my Father will love those who love me. I will too love them and reveal them, um, myself to them. You see, as you obey them, God, Jesus will reveal himself to you. You know, if you jump to, to verse 23, Jesus answered him, he was talking to Judas, whoever loves me will obey my teachings and my Father will love him and my Father and I will come to him and live with him. Hey, doesn't that sound like his presence? As we obey our obedience, it activates his presence in our lives. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The third thing, we need to keep praise as a lifestyle. Keep praise as a lifestyle. Remember Psalms uh, 22 verse 3, it says, God inhabits the praises of his people. As we worship him, as we praise him, guess what? He inhabits our praises. That's why the Bible says in the book of uh, Psalms 34 verse 1, Lord, I'm bursting with joy over what you have done for me and my lips are of, full of perpetual praises. As our lips are full of perpetual praises, God inhabits our praises, he inhabits our worship. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The fourth thing, we need to desire his presence. It's good to say, good thing to say God wants our presence, but do you desire his presence? You know, we must maintain a consciousness of his presence. You know, the Bible says in the book of James chapter 4, verse 7, So then surrender to God and stand up to the devil and resist the devil and you flee in agony. I like what verse 8 says. Move your heart closer and closer to God and he will even be closer to you. Make sure you cleanse yourself, you sinners, and keep your heart pure and stop doubting. As we pursue to be closer to him, he said, draw closer to me and I'll draw closer to you. As we do that, God begins to help us. That's why Psalms, uh, Isaiah 26 verse 2 says, Open the gates that the righteous nation which keeps the truth may enter. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts on you. As we fix our mind on him, as we desire to be in his presence, God will help us. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The last thing that helps us to make a platform for his presence is having a contrite and humble spirit. God is near to those with bro who are broken, contr with a broken, contrite, and humble spirit. You know, the Bible says in the book of Psalms 34 verse 18, God is near those who are broken with a broken heart and saves 
as such who have a contrite spirit. And Isaiah 57 verse 15 puts it in, in a way that I love. The high and loved ones, the, the, the high and the loved one who lives in, within eternity, the holy one says, I live in the high and holy places with those whose spirits are contrite and humble. I restore the crushed spirit of the humble and revive and encourage um, the, the courage of those with repentant hearts. As we humble ourselves, God is looking for people. He gives his grace to the humble. God gives his grace to the humble. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me just recap. In this month, we are trusting God for three things. We're trusting God for drastic intervention in our lives. We're trusting God for total restoration in different aspects of our lives. We're trusting God for supernatural empowerment. And today we're, we're focusing on the presence of God. And there are four dimensions to the presence of God. There's the universal presence. There's the abiding presence. There's the active presence. And the execution presence. And five keys to remain in his presence. Upright living. Living in obedience. Keeping praise is um, a lifestyle and our desire to be in his presence. Lastly, having a contrite and humble heart. You know, in this month, God wants us to operate in the supernatural. But the presence of God helps us. The presence of God helps us. I'm remembering that, you know, when I was sharing about the disciples, they were toiling, they were moving up and down, you know, they couldn't get to their destination. But when Jesus got into the boat, immediately they got to their destination. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. Maybe you've been toiling, you've been going round and round, and you have not been getting to your destination. There are some things that God spoke to you as the year was starting, but you are not making progress as you allow the presence of the Master in your situation, as you allow the presence of the Master to come into your life right now. God is making a way for you. Restoration is coming to you. Some of you, you have been forgotten. Some of you, there are opportunities that you have, your name had been forgotten. But may they wait for you. Just like the way they waited for David when he was anointed. When the anointing of God rests upon you, when the presence of God is with you where you go, even your limitations are broken. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's just take a moment to pray. That's Remember, we said we are trusting God for drastic intervention. There's someone I'm talking to right now. You need a financial intervention that God has to turn around your situation. We serve a God of divine intervention. May God intervene on your behalf. May God intervene on your behalf. May God extract you from that situation you are having right now. May God extract you. There's someone I'm talking to right now. You have got a health problem. May God intervene for you. In the next week, may you see a turnaround of your situation. In the name of Jesus, may God make a way for you. May God make a way for you. In the name of Jesus, this is our month where we begin to step out by faith and begin to operate in the supernatural. And the supernatural is we allow the presence of God, the accomplishing presence of God. Right now, I sense His presence. I sense His presence even as you are listening to me right now. May God make a way for you. Where there seems to be no way. May God restore the things that the kangaroo, web, the things that COVID, the things that the economy has stolen from you. May God make a way for you. Oh, Shandarabashata Kabadi. Father God, we thank you that Lord, we receive this word, that Lord, may you empower us supernaturally. Father, we thank you for your presence right now. We thank you for your presence. For in your presence, we are extracted from limitations. In your presence, Lord, you make a way for us where there seems to be no way. So, Father, we bless you. We thank you, O oh God. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the abiding presence. Thank you for the active presence. Thank you for the accomplishing presence. The God who answers by fire, may you answer us today. In the name of Jesus. 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 Someone, your file had been forgotten. You are going to be called for an interview. You are going to be called for an interview before the end of this month. You are going to be called for an interview. They are going to wait for you in the name of Jesus. They are going to wait for you. 
in Jesus' name. Oh, Ratanda Rabashende, Lataba Satakamanda. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this season. Thank you for the season you're ushering us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Maybe you are here today. And the starting point for, remember we said there's an abiding presence. The cross of Calvary made it possible for us that, you know, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us. The blood of Jesus was able to cleanse this vessel that the Holy Spirit can comfortably live inside of us. Maybe you are here today, you have never given your life to Jesus. You have never said yes to him. Remember, he paid the price for you. And he wants to stay with you. He, as you draw closer to him, he will draw closer to you. So you are here today. You have never given your life to him. I want to pray with you. I want to introduce you to the savior of your life. The man who laid down his life. Who was obedient to die for you. Maybe you are here today. You have never given your life to Jesus. I want to pray with you. There's a second group of people. You know him. But because of what has been happening, your life is not where it's supposed to be. I also want you to pray together with you so that we make your relationship right with him. Remember, the enemy always attacks the relationship we have with him. So today, there are so many people. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we want you to make sure that your relationship with God is made right. If you are one of those, I want you to stand up in front of wherever you are. Stand up to your feet as a sign of reverence. And I want you to put your left hand on your heart and lift up your right hand. And I want to pray with you. Just repeat with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are the Lord of my life. Even today, I say yes to you. Come into my heart. Thank you for your blood that washes me clean. Thank you for, for, for your blood that cleanses me, that takes all legal claims that the enemy has upon my life. Because of your blood, you, 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 my Redeemer, you live. So, Father, I seal this confession with your blood in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me just pray for you. Father God, we thank you that you are a good God. We thank you for these people that have recommitted their lives to you, O oh God. So, Father, I pray that, Lord, may your abiding presence, your presence, may you show yourself strong on their behalf. Even as they've, they've said yes to you, Lord, I thank you for that abiding presence. 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 May this abiding presence rest upon your lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So thank you so much for joining us today. And in this month, we are going to pursue operating in the supernatural. As we understand the presence of God, as we understand the different dimensions of the presence of God, God will help us to operate in the supernatural. Otherwise, have a supernatural week. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you have been blessed by this message. Remember to share this message with others and meditate on the word during the week. We look forward to connecting with you again this week in our cell and prayer meetings. Join us again next week for our next Sunday service. Have a blessed week.